Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. We are returning to Frank Rudolph Young today and a very unique and interesting chapter for something I've wanted to cover a little bit. If you ever try to acquire a new skill, it's kind of what we have to do in the modern age. We have to acquire new skills quickly as a part of the process of creating our reality. For instance, hey, I need to learn how to use Adobe so I can edit a video or use Audition so I can edit the sound. How do I do that if I want to start a YouTube channel? You know, you go through a process where you learn these skills. I I need to learn how to program my computer or do code or do whatever it is. I've found there's a sort of spiritual, mental aspect to acquiring a skill and understanding your mind. And Frank Rudolph Young kind of merges the physicality of this. Frank Rudolph Young is a very interesting writer. We've covered him in several episodes, and I've even got some comments that the way he writes is very different and unique. He sort of taught yoga and was a trainer, and so there's a physicality to his writing that he gives exercises on using the spine and acquiring energies. Check out the previous episodes on using the mind navel, which is an amazing way to eliminate pain and a variety of different elements. He has a lot of different techniques. The way he writes is interesting, but this particular chapter I really enjoyed comes from Somo Psychic Power, and it's how to get immediate power to perform a new skill expertly. There is no such thing as a positive, unchanging career. There's no certainty that any career will remain profitable for the length of your life. When yours changes due to different needs, inventions, or demands, varying times or even bad times, your age or whatnot, you must have to master another branch of your own skill or even a new technique to continue with the skill you already have or be out in the cold. Having grown used to one skill for some time, however, it is not easy to discard and learn another. You've adapted your mind, your nerve impulses, your muscular movements, and your gland reactions to fit the old skill. To uproot it and learn another over compels you to change your whole makeup, including your instinctive somopsychic power. And yet, you have no other choice because a new skill may enable you to continue living at the level you have grown accustomed to. Although you also prefer to master a new skill which fits you, it might not be easy to find work with it. It might belong to a tightly unionized occupation, be saturated with applicants, etc. You may be compelled to prepare for a job that is not exactly to your liking, but which offers you more opportunity. That makes it harder for you to learn. Moreover, you have to master it quickly or its openings might dwindle. Your best bet is to master the somo psychic power to leap into performing a new skill expertly. The fantastic profits people have made by performing new skills expertly. Different people have made fantastic profits by performing new skills expertly. Highly paid middle-aged executives who had been fired because of mergers learned new skills in entirely different callings and made remarkable comebacks. Working people rose much faster and reaped more benefits in absolutely different callings from that which they had before. People who had their fill of big city life gave up their highly paid positions, moved to much healthier, less populated regions, and earned enough to enjoy the lives they sought. Retired people who were stifled in boredom filled their lives with exciting and profitable hobbies. Individuals who had specialized in one branch of an occupation mastered a totally different branch and did much better. People who had learned certain phases of their own skills poorly now mastered them and turned into experts. Others changed careers but incorporated into them what they had learned from the first ones and turned into much sought-after specialists. Outdated workers mastered the application of new discoveries and returned in the market of specialized skills. Many who were laid off permanently in bad times swiftly learned new skills. Others studied different ventures on their own, left their own easy jobs, and grew wealthy. Study the secret somo psychic power carefully, for you never know when you will need it desperately. A word of warning. Your having learned how to do something is no indication that you can do it to the best of your capacity, 
Once you learn how to do it, of course, you lose the feeling of inferiority which freezes the novice and replaces it with an attitude of confidence. When you try to better your speed and accuracy in it to overcome the unavoidable competition in it, you freeze again like the novice. But bear this in mind, you won't better your speed and accuracy simply by doing it faster and more accurately. You have to alter how you perform it. You have to eliminate surplus effort with economy of movement and make every step you take advance you without backtracking. Never forget that. Your own obstacles against performing a new skill expertly. Great obstacles prevent you from performing a new skill expertly. For one thing, psychologically you are thrown back into the position of a novice, student or apprentice. Then the self-assurance and confidence you enjoyed in the old skill vanishes. You don't approach the new skill with calm eyes, firm hands, and a positive mind. Instead, you hesitate before making a move. You hold your breath as you ready, study, or receive directions. You are on the verge of trembling as you anticipate making one mistake after another. Your timing is poor, for you can't direct your muscles with ease and efficiency in the new movements. Nervous tension aggravates your plight and fills you with worry. You can no longer control your fellow employees or your superior because you feel too insignificant. The new physical positions you have to assume in the skill are strange to you and strain your eyes, arms, legs, and back or some other part of you and may curse you with nagging aches. If continued long enough, these may lead to simulations of lumbago, backache, eyeache, headache, torturing arches, and other intractable agonies. All this leaves you tremulous somopsychic power dominated by your dread sympathetics. Your heart beats hysterically with thready pulse and you are terrified of making an idiot of yourself before others. Your overtensed muscles hold far more blood than they need to, leaving your brain with not enough fresh blood to think straight. The new strains and discomforts flash their pain signals into your conscious mind, which in response stimulates your adrenals to fight back. You are converted into a physical and mental stumble bum. You are wound up in a gland cramp, intratension. You have to relax it first before you can begin to master a new skill. How to relax your gland cramp intratension with the efficient three-way pattern for learning. You learn how to do anything quickly and easily by understanding, first of all, what the technique consists of as a whole, and then by mastering it through a series of increasingly complex steps. Once you learn one step and start another, your effort in trying to learn the second one banishes the first into your subconscious mind, and you perform the first step instinctively thereafter. After you learn all the steps, your performance rounds off into a smooth whole. Here's the efficient three-way pattern for learning evolved from the thorough research of the techniques of those who have mastered this secret somopsychic power. 1. Break the new skill down into steps. 2. Master each step individually. 3. Fuse all the steps together, like parts fitting smoothly into a whole. In brief, master new technique from the whole to the part and from the part to the whole again. The secret of the magic transfer of skills. There is an advantage too in your having mastered another skill. Your training in one skill helps you master other skills, except when the other skills require absolutely different reflex reactions, such as the difference between boxing and weightlifting or basketball and golf. There is even bilateral transfer of learning. Teach your left hand a skill if you are right-handed, and your right hand can in most cases automatically perform that skill without practice. Either hand, in other words, is under the control of the same mind-body mechanism and therefore operates under the same instinctive somopsychic power when performing that skill. You don't learn to memorize faster by practicing memorizing, however. The power of retention is not affected by practice. You improve it merely by improving the way you record the facts in your head. The quality of your brain does not improve. What improves is your ability to use your faculties. But you develop this ability by relaxing your gland cramp intratension regularly with every skill you practice. 
Relaxing it enables your instinctive somopsychic power to function effectively and efficiently in the new skill and to throw your whole body and mind easier into the appropriate united rhythm. Note, but it never pays to rush too quickly when learning anything new. The skills or principles you have already learned in the first skill won't automatically transfer themselves to the new skill. You still have to master the new skill as a new skill, but you can automatically trigger this transfer of learning from a mastered skill to a new skill with the Somo Psychic Power Stimulator. How to automatically trigger your transfer of learning with the Somo Psychic Power Stimulator. Apply the Somo Psychic Power Stimulator each time just before you start practicing a new skill and it will alter your mind and body into those of a person who can master the new skill easily. The Somo Psychic Power Stimulator achieves this by ridding your conscious mind of the nervousness and anxiety and your body of the excessive awkwardness that grips you at such a time. Your Somo Psychic Power Stimulator is also composed of a Somo and a Psychic Half. The Somo Half consists of the simple movement, the spinal snap. The spinal snap that he describes here is where you stretch the lower half of your back that alleviates the squeezing weight of your vertebra upon your spinal nerves as these branch away from your spinal cord into the different parts of your body. So you stand against a wall, a normal stance with a flat surface, and then you put your arms up in the air, stretching as high as you can against the wall. And then you continue to stretch. Now you stretch up tall from the waist up, and you try to touch the ceiling with your fingertips. And at the same time, from the waist down, you shrink down from the waist down, bending the knees, trying to touch the ground with your knees, always keeping your feet flat on the ground. So the spinal step stretches the lower half of your back and alleviates the squeezing weight. And all your muscles as a result feel more limber and more ready to adapt themselves to any new combination of movements. That's why the spinal snap switches on the somo half of your somo psychic power stimulator. The psychic half of your somo psychic power stimulator. Sit alone in your room and picture your normal hesitant self trying to learn a new complicated skill. Reproduce a similar traumatic experience in your life if need be. If you picture it realistically enough, your heart beats faster but weaker. Your breathing gets faster but more shallow. Your body turns restless and jumpy. Your fingers move nervously. Your stomach flutters and feels cold. Even your bowels may feel like moving as if you're running away from the fearful ordeal. Your adrenals are all over aroused. Hold this picture in your mind for five seconds. Now, visualize yourself changing completely into someone who can learn any new skill at the snap of a finger. To do so, first of all, let your arms hang loose by your sides and stretch out your fingers to the hilt for an instant. That muscular action suggests to your brain you're casting off of everything you detest. In this instance, you are casting off your nervousness, anxiety, hesitancy, awkwardness, fear of making mistakes, and difficulty of ready comprehension. You're casting off your adrenal over-aroused state. Take a deep breath to normalize your heartbeat and breathing and to steady the flutter of your stomach and diaphragm. Then fill yourself with joy at the prospect of learning a new skill and with a childish longing to try it out. Cast off all do or die attitudes toward the new skill and approach it with a secret air of amusement. Your muscles will relax and your hands will steady without your even trying. Maintain that vision for four seconds. Repeat the entire simple procedure three times. Intensify it each time so that you actually visualize and feel yourself changing into a person brimming with confidence to master that new skill quickly. Practice this metamorphosis until you need to visualize the change just once in two seconds for your somo psychic power to be altered into that of such a person. You will leap into the power to perform a new skill, to learn a new way of making memory, to master ESP or whatever else you seek from the magic of this somo psychic power. Learn next the ritual routines to extract the best results from this magic. The four magic rules to quickly turn you into an expert in any new skill. As suggested before, the performance of the expert is by no means simply the performance of the beginner done more rapidly. The expert eliminates many of the beginner's unnecessary steps or movements. That's why much of his advanced technique extends beyond the comprehension of the beginner. 
So to develop into an expert in any skill, whether it be physical, mental, or psychic, follow these four secret rules. One, eliminate any surplus steps, movements, and needless mistakes by maintaining an easy, steady, flowing pace of economy of rhythm. Two, acquire precision by paying close attention to details. Three, steadily and smoothly do just as much work as possible with either hand at the same time. Four, look increasingly farther ahead at what you are doing, like reading farther ahead when you type, in order to be prepared for anything novel or unexpectedly complex coming up. Now practice these four rules with the simple exercises. The four magic exercises to turn you into an expert swiftly with any skill. Exercise one, take a magazine and turn the pages individually as quickly as you can. You soon run into difficulties because many of the pages stick together or are difficult to separate from others. Time yourself to see how long it takes you to thumb through the whole magazine. You might prefer to use a book. Exercise two, repeat. Exercise one, but do it now with an easy flowing rhythm. That is, do it unhurriedly, but without wasted time and time yourself again. Note, turning pages quickly and individually is difficult. It is also exasperating by forcing yourself to do so with calm and rhythm is fine nerve discipline too. Exercise three, pile three stacks of paper, such as stacks of typing paper on the table before you, one beside the other. Pick up in assembly line fashion, one sheet from each pad and pile these up in layers of threes into one big pad. Exercise four, repeat exercises faster and faster, not by trying to do it more quickly, but by applying the four rules outlined in the previous section. These four rules and magic exercises will convert you into an expert swiftly in any skill you learn because they calm your frantic somopsychic power and enable you to perform the skill with economy rhythm. The global grasp, the miracle method to learn verbal skills. The global method of learning was discussed by Woodford in his experimental psychology. School practice, he wrote, tends toward the maximum of one thing at a time and that done well, bit by bit learning in other words. But Woodford added there are more famous actors and musicians who prefer the global method of learning. Others before Woodford experimented on the global method, Lottie Stevens in 1910 concluded from her work that the global method took less time to learn anything. At first she explained the advantage of using it was not always obvious. You had to practice for a while before you could use this method successfully, but it was the better learning method because it kept each item of the skill or the subject being learned in its proper place and relation all the time. Longware de Blancas, 1902, found that poems learned globally were remembered better over a period of days than those learned part by part. The procedure of the global method authorities have noted has never been described, but I studied and experimented with it for over 10 years and I lifted the veil of mystery from it. As early as 1954, I taught it successfully to thousands. As I announced then, it requires full use of your hidden powers. My secret Somo Psychic Power Laboratories added Somo Psychic Power to the global method and transformed it into the global grasp method, the miracle method to learn verbal skills, now at least. The secret will be revealed to you. The secret of the miracle global grasp method of learning verbal skills. The global grasp method of learning requires the full use of your instinctive somo psychic power. These are its secret steps. 1. Pick up the written material that you wish to memorize and read it carefully all the way through. Make sure you understand every sentence in it, but not necessarily every word. It is possible to grasp the meaning of a sentence without being able to define its words accurately. 2. Start from the beginning again and scan through the whole material. Note carefully its main divisions and subdivisions. Try to understand it still more thoroughly now. Seek to extract every bit of meaning out of it rather than to try to memorize it word for word. 3. As you do so, look away from the material occasionally and repeat to yourself what you just read, using your own words to aid you whenever necessary. Gradually, the author's own words find their way into your own thinking or speech rhythm. Before long, you actually become him and fall into his somo-psychic power. For all practical purposes, you, yourself, are then the author of the material, and the words in his creation become yours. Whenever you try to remember them thereafter, your somo-psychic powers alters to be like his and transforms you mentally into him. Master the miracle global grasp method in the three following magic exercises. 
Exercise one, pick up a Shakespeare play, say Hamlet. Try to learn the, with a global grasp any of its famous passages. Exercise two, do likewise with Julius Caesar and Macbeth. Exercise three, repeat exercise one, but with a section from a technical book instead. When you're trying to memorize a long list or a passage, the global grasp method is the most effective. It immediately puts each item of the material in its right place and establishes all the necessary connections between them in your brain. That facilitates your close attention to important details. It also breaks up the task of memorization into a series of intermediate smaller tasks unless you master one step at a time. It snaps the awe out of the subject matter and encourages you to proceed and master all of it. Below are case histories of people who leaped into power to perform a new skill expertly. The names and places have been changed. How laid off George B. easily regained his financial independence. George B. had recovered from the shock of his layoff at 53. He had been dismissed after working 25 years for the same company and figured that he'd never be eligible for a full pension anywhere. With so many out of work and low on funds, his home was hard to sell. George had taken some temporary small jobs, but his future looked bleak. His only alternative was to learn another skill. At his age, even then, it would not be easy to find a job in it, but it would improve his chances if time got better, and that could happen at any time. Should he be lucky enough to get his old job back too, he would have a new skill to fall back on whenever he had to. George selected a skill that was seemingly depression-proof because it was constantly in demand even on a part-time basis, but he had a trouble learning it, for it was so different from what he had done before, he gave up in despair and went from bad to worse. His wife grew frantic. I taught George how to leap into the power to perform a new skill expertly. He relaxed his gland cramp intratension with the efficient three-way pattern for learning. It also broke down his new skill into steps and took the mystery out of it. George mastered each step individually and grouped them like parts fitting into a whole. He was no longer discouraged when his progress in the new skill was not regular, for he understood now the meaning of periods of arrested progress in the acquisition of a skill. George soon landed a job in the field and it paid him a comfortable living wage. A few months later he received a raise and lost his dread for the bad times. Even if the standard of living for himself and his family had been considerably reduced, soon after he was recalled to his old job, but he was now prepared to meet another layoff should it come. How Louisa D. promptly became an expert in a new and more lucrative branch of her occupation. Louisa was not satisfied with the wages of her comparatively hard work. Women with no more qualifications than she had learned a new branch of her occupation and were being paid decidedly more than she plus receiving better benefits, better paid vacations, and better working conditions. These women even more respected Louisa determined to master that new branch too. She learned it, but was not hired because she was not expert enough in it. To her, it was a confusing, bewildering skill which required speed, rhythm, and careful application to details. She tightened up when performing it. I taught Louisa how to leap into the power to perform a new skill expertly with the efficient three-way pattern of learning. She relaxed her gland, cramp, and retention. It rid her conscious mind of its feeling of nervousness and anxiety and her body of the awkwardness and slowness that overcame her at times in that skill. Then she easily transferred her learning from her old skill into this new skill that eliminated her surplus steps and needless mistakes by maintaining an easy, steady, flowing pace or economy of rhythm. And she acquired precision by paying close but it relaxed attention to details. Not only that, but now she smoothly did just as much with either hand at the same time. She also looked ahead of what she was doing at the moment so that she was thoroughly prepared for any surprises coming up. Louisa was soon hired and promptly became an expert in this new branch of her occupation. She demanded a good raise and got it. How Emile Z remained an expert in his rapidly changing calling. Emile was an expert in his profession and provided his wife and family with extraordinary comforts. He was proud, without vanity, of himself and was satisfied that he had applied himself so closely to his studies and to practicing its skills that he had leaped quickly to success after graduation. His envied income was so certain that he had borrowed extensively, including buying stocks on margin to get rich quick on several different fronts. But the tide turned 
New needs arose in his profession, and new techniques and technology were placing his own. His patronage dwindled steadily, for the new graduates were trained in the new advances. Emile was alarmed. He could no longer pay for the huge debts he had contracted on his investments. He would even have to sell his gorgeous home in an exclusive suburb and move his shocked family into an old apartment in the crowded city neighborhood. What a come down in life! To top it all, he would be forcibly retired because his practice was folding up. In a frenzy, Emile tried to learn the new techniques in his profession and invest in its new technology. He even took postgraduate courses, but he fumed as he watched the younger people apply the new skill while he himself groped. Instead of being in his prime now, he thought with terror he was a has-been. I explained to Emil how his tremulous somopsychic power stood in his way and taught him how to leap into the power to perform a new skill expertly. After relaxing his gland cramp intertension with the efficient three-way pattern for learning, he automatically triggered his transfer of learning from the old skill to the new skill with the somopsychic power stimulator. It swiftly cast out his do or die attitude, and he approached the new skill with secret air of amusement. His muscles lost their tightness and his hands steadied without even trying to maintain this winning attitude. He practiced the new skill by spacing it along instead of crowding it. He effected this by practicing a different phase whenever he grew bored with one he was practicing. This brought him variety. Emil made big strides as the end of his postgraduate course, he enthusiastically invested in the new technology. He then resumed his practice and outcompeted the young at doing their thing. So to summarize, you can leap into this power that he's talking about, performing a new skill expertly. And the first step is to relax what he calls the gland cramp intratension caused by difficulties in mastering a new skill with the efficient three-way pattern for learning. And then the second step is transfer your knowledge into the new skill you're trying to master with the somopsychic stimulator. The simple movement refreshes your mind and body and limbers your muscles. That's the standing exercise, which per perhaps has some relationship to learning. The third step is to turn into an expert fastest in any school skill with the four magic rules that he mentions. And then step four is learn a verbal skill miraculously with the global grasp method. You will now possess the magic power to alter your tremulous somo psychic power and perform a new skill expertly in record time, be it mental, physical, verbal, or psychic. So don't get caught up in his descriptions and his funny words that he says. You don't even need to apply exactly what's going on. The reason I felt compelled to read this, I believe this is important. We're going through a huge, massive change in our economy and our world. A lot of people are unemployed. A lot of people are in a tough situation. I've experienced this many times. And one of the things is it's tough once you get used to a certain job or way of life to completely start something new, but it keeps you young. I look at what my father and mother went through and it's like they would give up on acquiring new skills or learning new things and you slowly die. So you want to be open to learning new skills. You don't want to reach a point in your life where you're like, I'm old enough. I don't need to learn anything more. Learn, learn how to create a web page or to code something or memorize something or to act or whatever it is you want to learn. Learning new skills on a regular basis opens up different parts of your mind. It's something I see all the time with friends of mine or people that have come to me for help is they've been in one field and they get so programmed in that field, they're unable to do anything else. And they're afraid to start new skills because it feels like they're going backwards to the very beginning. Be open to acquiring the new skills. And what he's basically saying is there's a certain tension that you have when you acquire a new skill. This nervous tension reduces your ability to do it properly. When you go into flow, relaxed flow, where you relax yourself, then what happens is you're able to transform. There's some visualization techniques he uses here where you envision the old self that is nervous and then you envision the new self. You kind of visualize this transformation. It creates the transformation subconsciously. So I have personally found similar yoga techniques and stretching techniques to be very powerful in the process of changing your habits or behaviors. The spinal stretch exercise that he talks about, it seems out of place in this chapter, but it's good to remind ourselves that everything is not all mental. The body is a part of this process. The somopsychic 
idea that he's talking about is the combination of the body and the mind. When you combine the body and making the body relaxed, your mind seems to understand and acquire new skills faster. Also, using both sides of the body, the left and right hand, using both quadrants of the brain, the right and left brain is powerful and it helps you to acquire these new skills. Get into a mindset that you want to acquire new skills. You want to learn new things. That way you have a new excitement for a future life. Those are the things you want to focus on. So I just feel like it's important right now that we're aware that we can acquire new skills. The world is constantly changing. There was a time in my life there was no internet. And there was a time in my life when there was no social media. And people have had to change their businesses dramatically. And some people, they fail because they give up and they are stuck in the old ways. You get into a certain routine and you have a certain way of making money or a certain way of doing things. And that becomes the old way. Be open to adaptation and evolution in what you're doing. And it will help you on so many levels, especially in creating your reality as we move towards this new earth. So let me know if you're struggling with acquiring new skills bring the physical dimension into it apply some of these exercises and i would love to get feedback if any of these exercises helped people in memorizing or acquiring new skills what i've always found with frank rudolph young and the many different kind of writers that came in this post new thought age we had the new thought era and then the post new thought era and the material became sort of commercialized in a certain way. They loved to do acronyms and have definitions like the Somo Psychic Power Stimulator and those kind of things. But under it all are some specific exercises that can be very powerful. You can acquire any skill. Your power of adaptation is amazing. And you can evolve to become whatever you want. So if you want to create your reality, you can do it. You know, one of my favorite people to look at in doing this is Tim Ferriss. He can go and learn how to become a marksman in a couple of days. Once you go about acquiring new skills, you can do some amazing things. I've acquired techniques that are similar to this, to shooting a bow and arrow, to shooting a gun, to shooting a basketball, to playing golf. All of these things are part of this process. There's a mental and physical aspect to acquiring new skills. And so these give light to some different ways that you can go about looking at it to break it down into a certain way. So I'd love to get your feedback. If you apply these, please let me know in the comments. All episodes of The Reality Revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.